Move your mouse to select a slide to view. If you want to leave, just select Exit and you'll go back to the lab. Let's look at a cell infected with the AIDS virus. Viewed with a scanning electron microscope, the AIDS virus can be seen bulging from the side of the cell. AIDS, or Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome, is a devastating disease that is having a major impact on the world today. When someone has AIDS, their immune system stops working properly. This leaves them open to attack by all kinds of diseases that normally wouldn't pose any problems. Click when you want to go back. This cell is covered with antibodies. Antibodies play a key role in fighting off disease. They can attack invading cells or guide other specialized immune cells to attack invaders. Click when you want to go back. This is a crystal of acetyl salicylic acid, better known as aspirin. Aspirin is a common pain reliever and is also used to prevent blood from clotting, but don't use too much. It can give you a bad stomach ache. Bacteria can be grouped into three categories based on their shape. Cocci are round, spirilli are spiral shaped, and bacilli, like this one, are oval. The long tentacles are called flagelli, and they help the bacteria swim. Click when you're ready to go back. How small are bacteria? Here are a bunch of them on the head of a pin. Although bacteria come in a wide range of sizes, all of them are too small to see without a microscope. These bacteria were spotted with a scanning electron microscope. Click to go back and look at something else. Red blood cells float in a sea of straw-colored liquid called plasma. They're remarkable in their ability to be bumped, banged, and squished without getting hurt. Then again, it's easy to see why that's important. Red blood cells get banged around quite a bit as they move through the body. Click when you're ready to go black. Blue-green algae are among Earth's earliest life forms. Although they are primitive single-celled creatures, they might well be our distant ancestors.
These two cells were one cell just a moment ago. Cells reproduce by splitting in half. The original cell is called a mother cell, and the two new ones are called daughter cells. This cell splitting is how we grow and heal. Plants can use air, water, and sunlight to make energy. The key chemical in this process is called chlorophyll, and it's found inside plant cells like the ones here. It's chlorophyll that makes plants green. The movement inside the cells shows just how active and alive plants really are. Click when you'd like to move back and see something else. These are chromosomes from a cell that was about to divide. Chromosomes are made of DNA wrapped around a protein framework. Almost every cell in your body has a full set of 46 chromosomes containing a complete copy of all your genetic information. You're looking at an egg cell being fertilized. The egg cell contains genetic information from the mother, and the much smaller sperm contain genetic information from the father. When they combine, the stage is set for a new individual to grow. Does this look like a finger to you? That's what it is. Every person's fingerprints are different, and up close, these differences can be seen much more clearly. We have fingerprints to make it harder for things to slip out of our hands. Press your finger on the mouse button when you're ready to head back and look at something else. The head of a fly looks like this when we examine it closely. Aren't you glad they're fly-sized and not human-sized? Click when you're ready to buzz back to the lab. Here are a bunch of nerve cells. Nerve cells carry tiny electrical signals all over our bodies. These signals tell muscles when and how to move and let our brains know things like when our feet are cold. Complicated webs of nerves passing electrical signals around form the basis of our thoughts. These are white blood cells. They are one way our bodies fight disease. These cells crawl around our bodies looking for things they don't recognize and then eat them. Click when you're ready to crawl back to the lab.
These microorganisms live in the ocean. They produce most of the oxygen that we breathe, so we better be careful to preserve them. You are looking at a bunch of pollen grains. Plants use pollen to reproduce. Bees carry pollen between plants and make honey from what the plants don't use. Protozoans are one-celled animals. They live their whole lives as tiny creatures, far too small for the eye to see. Imagine how surprised scientists were when they first discovered a whole sea of life so small no one had ever seen them before. Red blood cells carry oxygen around our bodies. When loaded with oxygen from the lungs, they are bright red in color. But after they've given up their oxygen to needy cells throughout the body, they turn a deep purplish blue. Some people can see their own oxygen-depleted blood by looking at veins on the inside of their forearms. This is a magnified picture of a snowflake. Recently, scientists have discovered why no two snowflakes look the same. Tiny changes in humidity or temperature make drastic differences in how snowflakes grow. Since no two snowflakes form with exactly the same environment, they all come out differently. When you're ready to see something different, click and you'll go back to the lab. Does this look like candy to you? This is a vastly magnified sugar crystal. Sugar comes from many places. Beets, sugar cane, fruits, and even milk. Where do you think this sugar came from? This little wiggly thing is the cause of a disease called river blindness. It gets inside one of the cells in the body and then reproduces until it fills up the cell with its kids. When the cell can't hold anymore, it explodes, sending these new disease makers into the rest of the body where they try to do the same thing again. These nasty little guys can be stopped easily with antibiotics. This brightly colored object is a magnified vitamin C crystal. Vitamin C comes naturally from many fruits and vegetables, but we can also get it from pills. Some prominent scientists think that huge doses of vitamin C offer special protection against disease, but others disagree. What do you think? Isn't this a nasty looking bug? Weevils eat crops that we want to save for people. The invention of insecticides like DDT greatly improved the productivity of farms by keeping weevils like this one from eating our food. Years after these insecticides were invented, scientists found out that overuse caused harmful side effects. 
Farmers now try to balance the good and bad effects of pesticides like DDT.